Hi, my name is Ari Zucker and welcome to the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel. I have the pleasure of being an advisor in the New Jersey region, specifically in the West Orange chapter, I represent. And I'm on TJJ Bus 1 this summer with my friends from Toronto. This week we learned about a wicked prophet named Bilaam. Bilaam was enlisted to curse the Jewish people and, being a very bad guy, he was excited to do it. And he was getting ready, but God told him, no, don't do it. Don't go, don't curse the Jews. Nonetheless, Bilaam didn't listen, even though God assured him it wasn't going to be successful, and he went off. Bilaam arrived at an overlook, ready to curse the Jewish people, looking down on their camp, and as he was about to utter the worst curse he could think of, a blessing came out. Many commentators point out, as Refrand in particular, that there's one line in the blessing that Bilaam gives to the Jewish people where he's really making a prayer for himself. He prays, essentially, to experience a death similar to that of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, we can ask a very simple question. Bilaam was a Russia. He was a bad guy. He was a wicked man. Where does he come off asking for a death like that of these righteous tzaddikim? I mean, who's he kidding? Was he so delusional to think that he's actually a great guy and that a servant of Hashem, similar to the way our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, served God? Can't be. And in fact, the Orachai Makadosh explains that Bilaam wasn't so blind. He knew he wasn't the best of guys. But he hoped, prayed even, that one day before he died, he'd repent, he'd do tshuva. And in that way, when he died, he'd be a righteous man, just like our forefathers. And he could experience a death like them as well. But, explains the Orachai Makadosh, he totally missed the point. And to be honest, at first it seemed to me like a great idea. But then I remembered something that Rabbi Shai Shechter told me. He quoted to me a Gemara in Masechet of Odazar, Daf Yud Zayin Amr Aleph, 17a, that talks about Rabbi Lazar ben Dradoi. Rabbi Lazar ben Dradoi, the Gemara tells us, did not leave a single prostitute unmet, we'll say. He'd experienced all of them, he'd been to every single one. One day you heard about a woman that he'd never met before in a far-off land with a very, very high price. But, not wanting to lose his reputation, albeit very negative, he went off and he finds himself sitting across her on her bed. And in that moment, in what appears to be some divinely inspired message, she says, after this, Rebbe Lezer ben Jordai will never be able to repent. Whoa. Rebbe Lezer freaks out a little bit, and he leaves. And he starts thinking about the way he's lived his life, and he regrets it, and he becomes very remorseful. And he doesn't know what to do, so he turns to the mountains and to the valleys, to the sky and the earth, to the moon and the sun and the stars, and says, please, please, help me, beg for mercy on my behalf. I don't know what to do, but to no avail. Rebbe is forced to conclude to himself, it's up to me. I did this to myself. And with that, he put his head between his knees and cried until his soul left him. A baskol, a heavenly voice, rang out. Rebbe Lezer ben Jodoy, you are fit for the world to come. The Gemara continues and says that Rebbe cried and said, There are those who acquire the world to come in many years, and there are those who acquire the world to come in just one hour. Rav Shai told me that the Mejbrit Sarmagid, the second leader of the Hasidic movement, asks, Why is Rebbe crying? He should be jumping up and down for joy. Look at how forgiving Hashem is. You can have a guy who lived his entire life seeking after prostitutes and making sure that he'd been with every single one, every prostitute in the entire world. And even that guy can make it into heaven? How incredible is it that God can be so forgiving? And yet, Rebbe was crying. Because yes, you can live a life devoid of Torah and mitzvahs and still, in the final hour, make it into heaven by a hair. But what kind of a life is that? We don't live a life of Torah and perform mitzvos for the end game, for the reward in the next world. We do it for here, for now, for this world, because a life of Torah mitzvos is a better life. It's a great life, and I don't care about the reward in the future. Because keeping Shabbos brings me the greatest joy and serenity I know. Because learning Torah connects me to something beyond myself, so much greater than I can even imagine. Because staying away from Lashon Hara, from evil speech and gossip, enhances my relationships. And making blessings before and after I eat takes what would otherwise be a very mundane action and sanctifies it and uplifts it. May we all merit to live a life filled with Torah and mitzvos and experience the benefits from them in this world. 
Thank you so much for learning with me. Have a wonderful Shabbos. And don't forget to subscribe to the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel right there.